This is On Imagination with the Healing Garden, the fifth ethic, accountability. Accountability is one of the early stages of justice. There are absolutely three parts of natural justice, and that is the fourth ethic with personal law, self-government, and boundaries, discernment. The second one is accountability, the fifth ethic. And the third is equal footing, the sixth ethic. We are going to talk about that fifth ethic, accountability. This is where I see a lot of people forcing an ethic prematurely onto other people. And this is a problem. It is not possible to learn an ethic until you are naturally ready to do so which poses the problem. What do you do with somebody who is causing harm and damage to people before they are ethically ready? To that, I say, educate them. Educate them. The fifth ethic, the way all the ethics work is they're prerequisitional. So the information you learn from your previous ethic is the tool that you are going to need to learn the next ethic. If you do not have that lesson, then you're not going to be able to learn the next trial. So at the fourth ethic, you learn self-law, self-government, self-control, personal boundary. You're supposed to use that tool in the fifth ethic for that fifth trial. When you've mastered the utilization of the fourth ethic into that fifth trial, that is when you learn the fifth trial, which is accountability. You're supposed to take the ethic accountability and then walk into the sixth ethic, equal footing, to learn equal footing. In order to learn equal footing, you have to utilize self-government and accountability simultaneously to learn equal footing. So if you are in the sixth ethic, you are supposed to be juggling and self-regulating third ethic, self-regulating accountability and personal law discernment together to learn self-value, which gives you equal footing. If you do not have self-regulation, the third ethic, you're not going to be able to do this, which is why a lot of people get to the sixth ethic and they're stuck. This is what happens when you prematurely move into an ethic before you've integrated the ethics with that trial. It is vital that the ethical trial is absolutely integrated with the ethic prior to your arriving at the trial or you're going to have problems. This is why they are prerequisitional and this is why they must be learned in a precise order. Courage, self-authority, self-regulation, personal law, self-government, self, law, self-control, accountability, and then equal footing. It goes from there. At the completion of the sixth ethic with equal footing, you walk away with another ethic. I call this the ethical groupings. The first ethical grouping, ethical perspective one, two, three, is trust. If you have trust issues, it's because you are lacking the first, second, and third ethic. The second grouping is justice which is the fourth, fifth, and sixth ethic. Now, justice is not something that can be projected onto others. Fourth ethics, are we listening? You cannot project control onto another person. That is a consequence, a side effect of a fourth perspective that has been derailed from the trial. Every one of these ethical perspective personalities has a trial, a mission to do. And if you do not stay focused on the self, you project your trial onto others. Now you've got a problem because the moment you begin projecting your trial onto another person, you have failed the trial. Every fourth perspective who uses law on others has failed to internalize personal law and self-government. And it is the trial of learning how to take law in order and internalize it onto the self that allows them to pass from fourth into the fifth. Likewise, if you are somebody who projects accountability onto others, 
by force, you have violated the fifth ethic and you have failed the fifth trial. The trial can only be passed when you internalize the trial onto the self to hold thyself accountable and equal footing. If you are walking around projecting equal footing onto others, you have failed the sixth ethic, which is equal footing. By the seventh ethic, if you have learned all six ethics properly and in the right order, at the seventh ethic, you have learned this lesson and you stop projecting your problems and your trials onto others. At the seventh ethic, you finally have learned the mastery of internalizing and making sure that your trial stays on yourself. This is absolutely the next mastery from the seventh all the way up to the 12th ethic, learning how to internalize and keep your own trial to yourself. At the equal footing, at the completion of that sixth trial, something else occurs. The hierarchy comes down. And instead of everything being in this pyramid fashion of somebody standing at the top, the whole thing comes down and now you're all equal. Now it's, oh, you're over there and I'm over here and everyone's equal. This immediately invalidates hierarchical appraisal. Hierarchical appraisal is the appraisal process that foundationals and people under six ethical perspective use to determine the value of another human being. It's disgusting. It's a lot like slavery. In fact, it is the exact same mindset that was used and is used for slavery. It is the value and the appraisal of a human person, treating them like livestock, which is disgusting. We call that slavery. At the sixth ethical perspective, once you learn ethical equal footing, you abandon the hierarchy. You abandon the appraisal of a human person. And instead, you turn to ethical integrity. And ethical integrity is the only thing that matters. Value is equal of all people across the board. And you only assess the integrity. When you assess the integrity, you don't judge the person. That's the 12th ethic. You do not judge. You do not put a value or a worth on the person. Everybody is worth the same. What you do is you use discernment, fourth ethic, to decide if they should or should not have access to you until they have learned how to be safe around you. It's self-preservation without judgment. When you have accountability, what you are looking at doing is taking that accountability and applying it to yourself. You must hold yourself accountable. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because at the seventh ethical perspective, you're going to answer for everything you have done. It's not pleasant. It's hell. The seventh ethic sucks. Get used to it. Everything you have done wrong in your life comes back at you in the seventh ethic. So this is what I tell everybody who is struggling with or tackling the fifth ethic. Mind your ripples. Because once you get to that seventh ethic, you have to face yourself. You are going to take an ethical inventory at the seventh ethic of everything you have ever done wrong in your life. And because you have learned the ethic of equal footing and self-value and self-honesty, you are going to be answering to you and your ethical law. And you are a really cold, hard judge of the self. Mind your ripples. They come back at you. That is Mother Nature's idea of karma. I wish there was a God standing over me, damning me. That would have been nicer than me. There is no hiding. I remember when I was a child, I used to think about that. I was like four and five, imagining what it would be like to stand before God, having to explain myself to a God. <laughs> that would have been so much nicer. Worse, you're going to actually have to explain yourself to you. And because it's you, oh, oh, self-honesty is a bitch. 
I am also a very firm believer that the reason why a lot of people avoid their healing journey is because intuitively we know the seventh ethic is coming and we don't want to face ourselves. So there's a lot of people who do not pursue their own healing journey because they know the seventh ethic is coming and they're going to have to stand before themselves. It is a really brutal judgment. Mind your ripples. Because at the seventh, you will be holding yourself accountable. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.